This is how you maximize the capabilities on your GoPro. How's it going guys? My name is Parker Shepard. I'm a professional FPV drone pilot and I've been shooting professionally on GoPro for the past five years. And today I'm showing you the number one feature that will help you maximize the capabilities of your camera. And that feature is GoPro Labs. If you don't know what GoPro Labs is, it's basically a beta software from GoPro that allows you to unlock so many more capabilities in the camera, like bigger chapter sizes, higher bit rates, wider color gamuts, and so much more. All of this using QR codes that you generate through an app on your phone. So first I'm gonna show you guys how to install GoPro Labs and then we're gonna dive into some of my favorite features. So you're gonna head over to gopro.com and on gopro.com they have a GoPro Labs page. I'll leave a link directly to this page in the top of the description. Then you're gonna go over to try it now. It's gonna load up this GitHub account. And then from here, it's going to have all the different cameras listed. I'm using the GoPro Hero 13. If you're not using GoPro Hero 13, you can find your camera on here. So I'm going to click on GoPro Hero 13. And you're gonna see it's gonna download the software up here in the corner. All right, once the software finishes downloading, and go to your downloads and find the folder that says update. So I'm gonna put it on my desktop next to my SD card. Now you're going to need to make sure you have a micro SD card inserted into your computer like I have here. And you're just gonna drag this update folder onto your micro SD card. And once you have it there, you can go ahead and eject your card. Okay, now you're going to want to get your GoPro. So here I have my GoPro Hero 13. This is the white edition. If you guys haven't seen this, super sick on GoPro.com. So I'm gonna open up my GoPro, insert the micro SD card, and I'm going to turn it on, and then it's going to automatically update with the GoPro Labs firmware. There we go, we just got to the beeps, it's turning back on, and it has a check mark here that says updates complete. So that's when you know that GoPro Labs was successfully installed. So from here, you can start using QR codes. Now you can find QR codes on their website, but my favorite way to use the QR codes is through the app. So the app is called QR Control, and inside the app, one of the first pages you have here is your ProTune, and this is where you can change your shutter speed, your EV comp, ISO max, all of that stuff right here in the app. So if we go here and I want to set my ISO max to 100, I'm going to set my bitrate to high. Let's change a bunch of these different features. Set my white balance to 5,500. Set my color to flat. Let's go sharpness low. I'm just gonna do my usual GoPro settings here. 10 bit, set my shutter to 180 degree rule, which is basically just double of whatever my frame rate is that I'm recording on. Set it to video mode. Let's go in here and let's go to 5K 8 by 7 Let's do 30 FPS. Lens wide. In body stabilization, we're gonna turn off. Okay, that's my usual settings I set on my GoPro. And now to use these settings now that I've loaded into my phone. I'm just gonna point my GoPro at it, and there we go, it switched my settings for me. Now these features are super helpful, especially for FPV pilots. If you're using a naked GoPro, like I do on a lot of my tiny drones, I can control all my settings straight through the app without having to connect the screen back to the naked GoPro to change my settings. This is also great if you wanna set the same settings across a bunch of cameras at once. You can load all of your settings straight into this app, and then you can just go and take every camera and show the QR code to all the cameras, and they're all gonna set up the same way. Now I'm gonna go to the app, and I'm going to clear those settings I just put in, and we're going to dive into my favorite part of using GoPro Labs, which is the extra features. So if you go to the app and you go to the extras tab all the way at the end, and you click on this drop down, there's a whole list of features on here. And I'm just gonna show you a few of my favorites, but there are so many features in here that are so good. I encourage you guys to go in and just play around with them, explore all the different options so you guys can find all the hidden features that work well for you. 
Now the first feature we're gonna talk about is bigger chapter sizes. So if you go over here, you're gonna drop down, go to 64 BT, that's going to pull up the chapter size feature. If you guys don't know what chapters are, it's basically whenever you're recording a long file on the GoPro, it will break up your video into individual video sizes. And by changing the chapter sizes to larger chapters, it's going to make those breakups longer and longer apart so that your video gets broken up less whenever you're recording long videos. This is nice for FPV because sometimes I do long range flights and I have the stock chapter sizes, it will break up my flight. Then it's just a little annoying to edit, especially if it's broken up right in the middle of like a good take. So I set my chapter sizes to 64 gigabytes, which by doing that, you type in 64,000 under input data. And that's going to set your chapter sizes to 64 gigabytes. We just scan that. There we go. Now my chapter sizes on this camera are 64 gigabytes. And this works on the Hero 11, 12, and 13. If you have the 8, 9, or 10, you can just leave it as one on the, under the input data and it'll give you 12 gigabyte chapter sizes. Next up, we're going to talk about bit rate. So if you're down here to BITR, it automatically sets to 150, but with the GoPro Hero 13, you can bump it all the way up to 300. Now, if you aren't using GoPro Hero 13 and you have like the Hero 10 or 11 or 12, I would set it to around 150. And 300 is a little bit overkill. You are gonna have much larger file sizes, but I don't mind. I'd rather have the extra data in my footage whenever I go into editing. Now, if you are going to set the 300, make sure you test your SD cards before you go out and do a shoot with your GoPro because your SD card has to be fast enough to keep up with it. You have to have the best of the best SD cards to handle 300 megabits. So under input data, I'm just going to type in 300, set that to permanent, scan it with my GoPro, and there we go. Now I have a bit rate of 300 on this Hero 13. And that's also something I forgot to mention in the last feature. Whenever you guys are scanning these QR codes, for example, features like this, make sure you click permanent before you scan it so that your GoPro remembers it. If you don't select permanent and you scan that QR code, once you turn your GoPro off and turn it back on, it's going to clear that feature from the camera. Now there are features that I leave permanent off because I don't want it permanently on my camera. I only want it for certain scenarios and we'll cover one of those features later on in this video. All right, next up, we're going to cover the histogram. So if you go to H-I-S-T, that is going to add a histogram to your camera. So I already selected permanent and I'm going to scan that with my camera. So now I have a histogram on the screen of my camera. Now, whenever you do use this, it's going to put the histogram dead center on the screen of your camera, and it kind of gets in the way to where you can't see your image anymore. So if you go to HSTP, click permanent again. Now I just leave the input data where it's at. You can play around with that. It's the X, Y, and Z, like positions of where the histogram is on your camera. But I find the stock one to be just fine. It puts it in the bottom left corner of your screen. And now this is an absolute hack for nailing exposure on your GoPro. If you're like me, I lock off all the settings on my camera when I'm filming. I throw an ND filter on so that my exposure doesn't change when I'm flying. But that means that I have to nail my exposure whenever I am setting it on the camera. And the histogram just allows me to make sure that I'm nailing that exposure every single time. Next up, we are going down to NR01. And this is the noise reduction feature on the camera. So GoPros have a built-in noise reduction built into the camera. But if you're like me, I want to turn that feature off to where I have the most noise in my footage because I like to control it in post whenever I'm editing. I have noise reduction softwares and plugins that I use while I'm editing to take that noise out. And you have way more control over it that way. So I'd rather control it myself in post than have the camera do it for me. So I use this feature to turn noise reduction off. So I'm gonna select permanent. And to turn noise reduction off, you're going to set your input data to one. Gonna scan that with my camera, and there we go. Noise reduction is now turned off on my GoPro. Okay, moving right along, we are going to go to LEVL. Gonna set that to permanent again. And what this is going to do is, it's going to enable an on-screen spirit level. So when you scan it, then now on the camera, I have a level that shows me whether my angle is level or not. 
This is super nice just for whenever you're setting up like static shots or anything like that, or even when you're holding your camera and just wanna make sure that your camera's level when you're filming. I'm a little OCD when I'm filming and I always wanna make sure my footage is perfectly level. And so this just helps me achieve that while I'm filming. Next feature we're going to cover, this one is really cool. So we are going to go to GUID. This is the guide feature. And if you leave the input data that's already stock in here and scan it with your GoPro, it is going to add guides on your screen. They're going to show you the vertical crop and the landscape crop for 16 by nine. And even if you change the crop ratio in your GoPro or change the mode that you're in, those are going to adjust with the crop that you have on the GoPro set to show you the 16 by nine landscape and the nine by 16 vertical. That is super nice if you're filming both for YouTube and social content, you can frame it up to where you know that it's going to capture both vertically and landscape and look good without having to do any guesswork while you're filming. Now, the next feature we're going to talk about, if you go down to OWNR, this is the owner information in the camera. You can type in your own data here I'm just going to put my name for now, but usually I would add my email and my phone number here. And you scan it with your camera. It is now going to display all that information that you input in that input data range on the back of your camera and also write it into the metadata on your video files or photo files that save to your micro SD card. There's two scenarios that this is really nice for. One, whenever you're filming with a bunch of other people who also have GoPros, you can easily distinguish between all the cameras as to whose is whose just by turning it on and seeing the name on the back. Two, if you were to lose your camera, someone could easily determine whose camera it is and contact you just by turning the camera on and seeing your contact information and name on the back of the screen or if they were to take the micro SD card out, put it in a computer, they can see that information, the metadata on the card. So that's just one little safety feature I like to add to all my cameras so that if I were to happen to lose a drone while I'm out flying FPV, perhaps someone finds it and they turn it on, they would be able to contact me and get it back to me. All right, now let's dive into a few niche features in GoPro Labs. One of my favorite being the dive feature. So if you go to D-I-V-E, dive, and you set it to one, it's going to turn on a special stabilization mode optimized for hypersmooth for whenever you're filming underwater. Now, if you ever use a GoPro underwater with hypersmooth, it looks a little wonky. Hypersmooth doesn't really work that great underwater, but if you're using this GoPro Labs feature and you turn it on, it will make your stabilization work so well underwater. I just did a big trip to Malta and I used this feature the entire time you're we diving and it worked so good. I'm super hyped on this feature. It's a new one for the GoPro Hero 13. I believe it only works for GoPro Hero 13, but it is such a clutch feature for anybody who does any form of diving. Now, just a forewarning, make sure you turn this off and clear this off your camera once you're not diving. I forgot to do that and film some FPV shots and it completely ruined my shots because all of it had this stabilization that's built for underwater, still turned on and it's looked really wonky whenever it's not underwater. So make sure that when you're not underwater, this feature is turned off. An easy way to do that is whenever you're going diving, you can put this feature on your camera, but don't select permanent. So once you turn your camera off and turn it back on, the feature is clear off the camera or in GoPro Labs, if you go all the way down to reset, just exclamation point reset, not the factory set or any of the other stuff that's in, in the uh, extras list, just the reset tab, and you scan your camera with this QR code, it's going to remove all of the GoPro Labs features you put on the camera, you're going to reset it. So if you don't know if your dive feature is still on or off, it's just an easy way to make sure that you clear it off your camera. Now, this next one is very niche, B-E-R-S. This is how you bypass the electronic rolling shutter compensation in the camera. Now, you might wonder why you would ever want to turn that off. 
Well, if you're ever doing any hard mounted shots, they're very popular now on social media, where you mount your camera hard mounted to an object so you can move around with the object and the background's gonna move, but the object's gonna stay perfectly still. If you do that without turning off the electronic rolling shutter compensation, your object is gonna like wave a little bit and look all weird whenever you're filming. So if you turn this on and scan your QR code in your GoPro, this will turn off the electronic rolling shutter compensation so that your object doesn't do that weird waving whenever you're filming. So if you guys are ever doing hard mounted shots with a GoPro, make sure you guys are using this feature to turn off the electronic rolling shutter and it's gonna make your footage look so much better. And again, this is one of those features that I never click that permanent button on because I want to just be able to turn my camera off and turn it back on and have it completely wipe this off the camera because it is very niche and I hardly ever use it, but it is very clutch in the scenarios that you do need to use it. So yeah, that's all of my favorite features in GoPro Labs. It is an incredible software and you can do so much with it. It has honestly changed the way I use my GoPro. And again, these are just some of my favorite features that are in GoPro Labs. There's still so many other features that are on that app. I definitely encourage you guys to go and explore those features for yourself. And also, if you guys are interested in purchasing a GoPro or anything from GoPro.com, you guys can use my discount code PSHEP10 to get 10% off of your order. That works on cameras, accessories, anything on GoPro.com. Use code PSHEP10, you'll save some money. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. This is one of the biggest hacks that I have found for GoPro that's completely changed the way I film on the camera. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next time.